Hello friends, in today's video, we're going to be seeing how we can actually accelerate our web API performance by utilizing caching. We're going to be integrating our web API with Redis, and we're going to be creating a caching service that allows us to cache responses so we can accelerate our web API performance. If you'd like to learn about .NET, AWS, or Azure, make sure you like and subscribe. It will really help the channel. Now, let's jump into the code. So what I currently have here is a very simple web application. This web application consists of two controllers. Default one is a very simple cars controller, which allow me to do a CRUD operation on cars. So it allows me to add, create, delete cars from my database. And we are utilizing a SQLite database to store all of the information. And that's pretty much it. We don't really have anything else. As we can see here, we have configured our API DB contacts to read the connection string from our app settings. We have an iCar service, which basically handle all of the communication with the database. And that's basically it. We don't really have anything else built in. So if we run this application, we can see here, we have a very simple CRUD operation. I think we have already one car inside our database. So if I click on execute, we'll be able to see I have one car here. And if I want to add a car, for example, I can simply do a post. And let's say this the ID is going to be two. Uh, we're going to say the make is Mercedes. Let's say the model is SL. Let's say SL600 E2001. And the color is black, for example. So now if I execute this and I go back here, I click on execute. Now we'll be able to see that I have two cars available in my database. So pretty straightforward implementation for a CRUD operation. So if we go back to the code right now, what I want to do here is I want to introduce Redis into my web application. So all of my responses and all of the requests to extract data from the database is going to be coming from a cache if the data is still valid for a certain amount of time, else it's going to come from the database. So that way I'm actually reducing the stress on my database and utilizing a caching storage in order for me to get the data that the user wants. So let's see how we can implement that. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to add some packages. So inside my terminal, I want to install two packages. The first one is going to be .NET add package stack exchange .redis. The other one is going to be .NET. Let's clear this up. Going to be .NET add package Microsoft extension caching .stack exchange. I think I misspelled something. So let's try this again. I forgot the word Redis at the end. Okay, perfect. So now that it has been installed successfully, if I want to check if everything is installed, I can come here and check my CS proj. And as we can see here inside my CS proj, I have my Microsoft extension caching Redis here as well as stack exchange Redis. Perfect. So what I want to do right now is I want to create a way where I can actually utilize Redis on my local machine. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to be relying on Docker in order for me to initiate a Docker Redis instance on my machine. And to do that, I have my Docker Compose file here. It's an empty file at the moment. And what I want to do is I want to add my Redis configuration in order for me to have it up and ready inside my machine. So let's see how we can do this. So this is going to be a few lines of code and we're going to have a full Redis instance available. So I'll start by adding the word services. And then I specify here, as you can see, because I called it Redis, my autocomplete has created it for me. But as we can see here, I have the name of my service, which is Redis. I specify the image here, which is Redis. And then we have the ports that I want to connect to. So since that is completed, basically this will allow me to have Redis. I'm just going to go to my terminal and run this command in order for me to have my Redis instance up and running. So now if I type docker dash compose up, now this should build my Redis instance. And as we can see, now Redis is actually running on my local machine. Okay, perfect. So now that my Redis instance is all available, what I want to do right now, I'm going to go to my app settings and add my connection string to Redis. So I'm going to put here Redis connection string. And basically we can see here that I'm going to utilize my local host as well as the port that I have specified inside my Docker Compose. And we can see here it's matching. So it's 6379 and it's going to be 6379. Perfect. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go to my program.cs and I'm going to inject the connection string to Redis inside here. So after my connection string to my database, I'm going to add the following. I'm going to put builder services, add stack exchange Redis. And now here I want to specify my configuration for my Redis cache. So I'm going to put options. And here what I want to do first of all is I want to specify my connection string. So first of all, for the configuration, I'm just telling it where it needs to find my connection string. And I'm then telling it that it needs to go to my configuration and get the Redis connection string. And the second one is telling me what is my instance name. And this is going to be what is going 
gonna be the name of the instance for my caching services. For this for uh, this example, I called it cars, but you can name it whatever you want because basically this is a CRUD operation for cars. So this is the main two items that I wanna specify here, and this will allow my application to directly connect to Redis as well as it will allow me to utilize DI in order for me to use it. So now that I have created this, the next thing that I want to do is inside my services, I'm going to create a new directory. I'm going to call this caching and inside my caching directory, I'm going to create an interface. And this interface basically will be the way I'm going to be injecting my Redis service inside my controllers in order for me to use it. So I'm going to call this I cache service and this interface is going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to have a couple of methods that I'm going to be initiating. So make this an interface and we're going to say that because I want to make it as generic as possible, I'm going to make it of type T and I'm going to call it get data based on some kind of a string. So this is going to be the first method that I want. It's allow me to extract data. And the second one is going to be set data, which basically allow me to actually set some kind of data inside my Redis cache. So the first one to extract it. The second one is to actually set it. So now that I have my interface ready, now I want to create an implementation. So I'm going to create a new class, call it cache service. And within my Redis cache service, I'm going to implement my interface. I read this cache service and it's going to ask me to implement it. So let's implement the missing members. Yes, please. And now here I can see I have my two members. So let's start building this implementation. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to actually get access to the I distributed cache service. So I'm going to put private read only I distributed cache and I'm going to call it cache. Second, I'm going to initialize this through the constructor. And basically this way I'm able to utilize this distributed cache, which refers to Redis. So now that I have this in place, now what I want to do is I want to actually start building my two methods here. And the first one is going to be pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to make this, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put var data equal cache get string. So basically here what I'm doing is I'm getting the data out based on the key that I have provided. And just something to mention here, Redis is a key value pair. So basically every single item that I stored inside my Redis cache is gonna be based on a key value. So this is key is gonna be how I'm gonna be able to access this data after I store it. So here basically what I'm telling it is based on this key, extract the data. And then I'm gonna say if data is not, I'm gonna return default of type T. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return the data by serializing it to the object type. And here I want to refer to my serializer. And now this is how I actually do it. So first of all, I get my data. I check if it's null. If it's null, I return it as a default. Else I serialize it based on whatever T type is, and then I return it back to the user or basically my controller in this aspect. Now let's set up the data, which is gonna be also pretty straightforward. So first of all, I wanna specify my options. So for options equal new distributed cache options. And what I wanna do here is I wanna specify my time to live. So my time to live is how long this, this data will be valid. So for example, let's say I'm setting, I'm getting my cars back from my database and I wanna store some kind of uh, caching information inside my database. How long will the cache data be valid? Is it valid for one minute? Is it valid? for one hour is it valid for one day because basically the validity of the data here it depends on how often is it being getting updated so for example if there's a lot of people adding their information to the website or adding their cars to the website having the data cast for one day is really unrealistic because basically anyone who wants to see all of the available data they have to wait one day for it to be listed but if i do like a five minute caching mechanism so basically that's every five minutes the full list of cars gets updated that's a bit more realistic that way i'm not hammering my database by keep doing get request on it as well, I'm actually giving them a good user experience that the data will be refreshed uh, very often, which is five minutes in this case. In my example right now, I'm just gonna make it as five minutes. So instead of 10 minutes here, I'm just gonna make it to five. And that way I'm actually able to get the data expired within that time. So now that I have added my options, now what I wanna do is I wanna set the way uh, set my data. So I'm going to utilize my caching service. I'm going to say set string. And then within the set string is going to take the key, which is going to be how I'm going to be accessing this data. I'm going to serialize the data uh, that I'm going to be getting. And then I'm specifying the options here, which is going to be the expiration date. Now, if you take a look at this, there's also the absolute expiring and the sliding expiration. So the sliding expiration mean here, for example, if the data is being utilized uh, a lot, it uh, keeps on extending the time. So 
if I used, if I access the data in the first five minutes, let's say there is one minute left before it gets expired, someone else accessed it, the sliding data, it will add additional time because still people are using it. There is some use cases where you need to use that, but we're not going to be using it here. So now that I have specified my implementation for my Redis cache service, now all I need to do is I'm going to go to my program.cs and inject it there, and it's going to be pretty straight. So I'm going to put builder dot services dot add scoped and i'm gonna define here my ash i cache service i redis cache service as well as my redis cache implementation great so now that i have this here this is all i need to do in order for me to integrate with Redis. now if i go to my controllers here i want to update my controller in order for me to utilize this service so first thing that i want to do is i want to inject this service here so i'm going to put the private read only i read this cache service i'm going to call it cache and i'm going to initialize it through the constructor similar to what we have the other one and now what i want to do is whenever i'm doing the get all cars now what i want to do is i want to add logic here in order for me to access the cache if there is data inside the cache i'm going to retrieve it if the data is valid as well if not i'm going to go to my database and extract the data from there so let's see how we can do this so we can start here by doing the following so i'm going to put for cars so i'm going to change that one below equal underscore cache dot get data and here i want to specify what's the data type it's going to be of type car and here i'm going to specify the keys and this is the key of how the car is going to be stored inside my redis cache i'm just going to call it cars and now basically Basically what I want to do, I'm going to say if car is not null, so basically if my cars in the exists, I'm going to return them to the user, else I'm just going to say cars is going to be equal to the, so this needs to be an i enumerable of cars rather than uh, a car. That's my mistake here. So what I want to do, what I'm doing here is basically I'm saying extract from my cache a list of cars that has the keyword cars. If does uh, if this uh, is not null or basically there's information return it to the user if it isn't or if it is null get my information from my database but here i'm missing also a single step which is what i want to do is i want to add these cars that i just extracted into my caching so next time it will get from the cache it will not have to go to my database to get it and the way i do that is by basically put using the cache service set data specify the same key because that's what i'm referring to and then specify the data that has been extracted so let's see this in action so now i'm gonna run my application and i'm gonna go back to my web browser and what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna refresh this first and i'm gonna first of all Actually, let's go back to Rider and put a breaking point so we can see it in action. So I'm going to add a breaking point here. And now let's execute this. So I'm going to put it right out, execute. And if I come down here, if we take a look at cars right now, we can see it's null. It doesn't have anything because it's the first time that we run it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my database, extract cars. And now we can see here inside cars, the items, there's the two cars that I have added. And now we set the car and now the car is set. And if you go back to the browser, we're getting back the information. But now if I execute this again, we come back here. And if I jump over this, we can see here that the car is now in the cache has two information. So I don't have to go to my database and I'm returning back the same information to the user. Okay, perfect. So now we can see how fast it is and how easy it is to actually utilize Redis inside our, for our application. The other item that we might want to do here is let's say we want to specify a cache per user, for example. So whenever it's user uh, is using our application, I want to specify a cache specifically for that user. So how can I do that? How can I allocate, uh, for example, a cache per user? There's different ways you can utilize whatever session they are using, but that's not really realistic because, for example, if the user uh, closes their browser and open up again the redis will be, the cache will be busted and they have to recache the information again so one way to do this is by checking the header uh, inside that incoming request if there's a user id and this is again a purely theoretical example and based on that you can create a specific caching uh, key for that user so we're going to be see this, seeing this here so i'm going to basically tap into the headers so i'm going to put var user id equal requests and i'm going to here as you can see my user id and what i want to do is i'm going to create my caching key so i'm going to put var caching key equal to cars with that user id so now instead of having this hard-coded cars for every single one of them it's going to be depending on which user is actually using my application so i'm going to update these keys to utilize this and i'm going to run my application again and in order for me to add headers i'm going to utilize postman so i'm going to open postman so what i have here in postman is a very simple get request if we take a look at the headers i don't have anything here 
if I click on send, if we go back to Rider, uh, actually we already got the information back. We're basically, we can see here that my information is received. Now, if I click send again, we're getting it. If I go back here and click on here so I can see the process, so click on send. If we go back here, we don't have anything right now inside my header, so the user ID is empty. So if I take a look at the caching key, it is only cars. And now because we already executed this before, there's information stored there and we're getting back the cached version. So now let's see inside Postman what happened if I add my user ID. So I'm going to add my user ID here and I'm going to put user ID is going to be 44 and I'm going to click on send. So now what's going to happen here is inside my application, I'm going to get my user ID, which is 44. And inside my cache right now, there is no key uh, for cars 44 because it's just been created. So it's going to be empty here. We're going to go to my database and get that. And now if I go back here, we're going to, we got the response. But if I execute this request again, and now inside my application, I come here, we'll be able to see now that I actually have information inside my cars. And basically I'm able to return from the cache. So the one last thing that we need to do here is let's say I want to add a car. So I'm going to come back to my web browser here and I'm going to post a new car. And let's say, for example, the Mercedes, uh, let's say the SL 63 AMG, for example. And we're going to use the 2014 and the color has to be black. So now that I have this, I click on execute. Now, if we go back to Postman and try to execute this request, what is the outcome that we're going to be seeing here? We're going to be seeing only the two cars. And let's run this. Why? Because the information that we are getting is cached. And this is means that the cache has not updated yet. We have to wait for the five minutes until the five minutes is over until we get the response. But if I want to actually update it, I'll have to wait. After the five minutes is over, it's going to run again. I don't have five. We don't want to wait for five minutes. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my Redis cache instance. And instead of having it a set time, I'm just going to put from set seconds and I'm going to add a 30 seconds timer. And now I'm going to run this again. And now me and the cache is only going to be valid for 30 seconds which is not really realistic, but let's see how it's going to go. So now that my application is building, I can go back to my web browser. And from here, for example, I can add another car. I'm going to put the car number four. I'm going to say it's going to be the from the year 2008. And it has to be silver, such an iconic car. And now we can see that execution has completed successfully. Now, if I put get all cars, if we come here, we can see I'm still, let's wait for it to load. We're still getting the code two cars because it's still cached. Now what I can do is I can open an application which allow me to see inside the cache. So here I have an application called Medis which allow me to see the information inside my Redis cache. And as we can see here for car 44, we can see this is my information for it. These are the information that are stored there. And we can see the time to live is actually coming down. So we can see it's now 25 seconds. And once this is over, it will basically be deleted from the cache. And basically what I need to do is I need to re-execute. So now if I come back to my postman before this is expired, click on execute. We're going to get back the response directly from, let me remove this breaking point. And if we go back here, we got the two information. But now if I go to Medis again, we can see the information is gone. And now if I click on send, I should be able to get all of the information which is for the four cars that I have added. And then if I go back to and I check my information there, let's just give it a second to update. Now we can see here that my four cars are actually cached and we can see the time to live is going down because we set it up to 30 seconds. And that's going to be the main key, uh, main point here is basically Redis allows us to configure the information however we want and basically give it the time to live whatever we want. And another way to handle all of this is basically whenever you add a new product or add a new car, you can update your cache or bust the old cache and pick a new one. There's different ways around, but this is the main idea behind it. So in this video, we have seen how we can actually utilize caching and how we can utilize this inside our web APIs and how we can actually accelerate our performance by utilizing. If you have any questions or any clarifications, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me and get access to the source code, please make sure you support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.